So you want to know how to wheel throw. Awesome! First, you should know that there's many different types of wheels. This is called a kick wheel that has a big concrete slab at the base that you kick to spin the wheel and give it some momentum. This is called a treadle wheel that operates similarly, but instead you have this little lever that you push with your foot back and forth to spin the wheel. We have electric wheels here at school. These are nice and easy because they have a pedal attached to them that causes the wheel to spin. Speaking of the wheel spinning, one really helpful tip is to always change the speed before you start a step. Don't change the speed in the middle of throwing. Once you have your intended speed, take your foot off of the pedal for the rest of the time that you are throwing. Another helpful tip is to always have your wheel spinning before you touch your clay. Don't have your hands on your clay and then make the wheel start to spin. That would most likely cause your project to become off-center. First, when you wheel throw, you must wedge your clay. So I'm going to measure out my clay to begin. I'm going to use about a pound each piece of clay. When you wedge your clay, there are different styles or ways to wedge. This is called the seashell wedge, um, where you have your hand flat at the base and then slightly slanted towards the top, kind of like a conch shell. The other style I want you to try is called a ram's head wedge. So for this one, you keep both of your hands straight on each side, pull back, and push forward. Sometimes it's also called the duck-faced wedge because it makes sort of a nose or a duck bill in the center. This may seem kind of silly, but I like to think of the motion of a rocking chair as I wedge. So pushing forward and then pulling back. Don't forget to wear an apron. Um, wheel throwing does get kind of messy, so I highly recommend it. You may ask yourself, why do we wedge? So why we wedge before we wheel throw is because it keeps the clay in even consistency. There will be no super dry spots or really wet spots, as well as getting rid of all of the air bubbles in your clay before you throw. To get yourself started, make sure that your wheel is spinning the correct direction based on if you're right or left-handed. If you are right-handed, you should have your wheel going counterclockwise. If you're left-handed, your wheel should be spinning clockwise. Then you will find a bat to put on the bat pins that are on your wheel. You'll need to find the correct sized bat to fit your wheel. Then you're going to slap your ball of clay onto the wheel. You want it to be towards the center. You don't want to start way out here because that's going to make centering tricky for you. Set yourself up for success by having it pretty well centered already. Now for your posture. If you are not centered, your clay will never be centered. You want to make sure that your elbows are always on your legs. They shouldn't be out in the air wobbling around. Having your elbows on your legs and propelling your body weight forward will help you to center your clay. Always make sure that your hands are wet when you wheel throw. Otherwise, you're causing friction and that is going to make it difficult. There are different ways to center. There's one way to center with a W using the bone structure of your hands, or you can use a fist and a hand at the side. Try both ways and see which way is easiest for you. Here I am W centering, and here I am using one hand on the side and then a fist on the top. The best way to know and to tell if your clay is centered is that it's literally just a feeling. Your clay will no longer feel like it's wobbly or moving around anymore. 
either way that you choose to center, your hands need to be working together. So they should always be linked. Use equal pressure on the side and on the top of your clay. Centering can be one of the most difficult parts of wheel throwing. But centering is essential because every step afterwards depends on your clay being centered to begin with. Next comes opening your clay. You basically want to use your thumbs like a drill, going down in the middle of your piece of clay. Then you want to stop yourself and measure the base of your clay with a needle tool, sticking it all the way down to the bat and then putting your finger up next to it. That will show you how much clay you have left at the base. You obviously don't want to go all of the way down to your bat. Try to make sure you leave a good half an inch of clay. Then using your two thumbs and spreading them apart from the center, you will open up your clay. After you open it, you will need to compress the bottom using your two fingers going in and out to compress the particles of clay or using a wooden rib and pushing it down. This will help your piece not crack in the future. Here's another way you could open the clay. You could use your two fingers like a claw and your fingers on top steadying your hand and pull it straight towards your belly button. Again, whatever way works the best for you. Don't forget to compress the bottom of your pot. This helps to prevent S cracks when we fire your pot in the kiln. How big you open your pot depends on your piece. It depends on if you would like it to be a wider pot or a more narrow piece. When pulling the walls of your pot, you need to make sure your hands work together, your inside hand and your outside hand. Using your knuckle and pushing at the base of your piece of clay and then your two fingers on the inside. You want to be not straight on on your clay but slightly to the side as you pull your wall. So pushing in with your knuckle you should see that bump that happens. That bump is what you are trying to pull upwards to make your walls of your pot taller. Again, with your hands linked and working together, you're going to slowly pull up the wall. Every time you pull, you want to compress the rim. I usually like to use a sponge to do that. It will take more than one pull to make your walls thinner. You could also try using a sponge on the outside of your pot rather than your knuckle. This gives more surface area to pull the wall. You want to make sure that you gradually release the clay when you reach the top. Here's what will happen if you get too excited and pull away too quickly. Oh no, <laughs> that is a wonky pot. If that does happen to you, sometimes we can save it by using a needle tool steady with one hand and cutting off the top ring of clay where it got pinched. Then you'll need to compress the rim again with your sponge. But that's an easy mistake to prevent just by being gentle and gradually releasing the clay when you reach the top. You can change the shape of your clay too, depending on if you're pushing harder from the inside or the outside. You can use a rib as well to change the shape of your clay. Just remember, whatever you do to your clay, you need to support it from both the inside and the outside. Again, I'm pulling the wall up. 
and then I'm compressing the top. Pulling the wall up and compressing the top. When you're pulling your walls, you want your wheel to be moving more slowly than it did when you centered your clay. So you should be going fast at the beginning and then as you start to pull your walls, you will want to slow your wheel down. Here's a good view of that bump that you see being pulled up. That is the thickness of your clay being pulled upwards to create thinner and taller walls. Your goal is to create even walls. So the base of your piece and the sides of it should be all about a quarter of an inch. This does take some practice, however. If your piece is totally, totally a goner, then what you'll end up doing is taking it off from the bat, smushing it up, and then making this ugly rainbow of clay that will help the clay dry more evenly over time. Then just stick it to your wheel until you're ready to clean up for the day. When you're ready to clean up for the day and this piece of clay is a little more dry, you'll smush it up and put it right back in the bag. Not every pot is a dub. <laughs> So you're ready to take your pot off of the bat. First, get rid of any water that's at the bottom of your pot. Then use your wooden stick going directly down to create a ring of clay and then angled in to take that extra clay off of the base of your pot. Again, take the wooden knife tool directly down to make a ring of clay. Then you're getting rid of the ring of clay by angling your wooden knife. Now you're going to hold your wire tool like a jump rope between your fingers and your thumb, and you'll cut it off from the bat. Make sure you push your thumbs down and you hold that wire tight as you move it under your pot. It is really important to release the clay from the bat or the board because otherwise, as it dries, it is going to try and release itself from the bat, and it will most likely crack underneath. So take that wire tool and remember to cut off your project. Voila! You did it! Good job! So proud! If you are keeping your project, put it in front of the fan before you put a bag over it. To release the splash pans from your wheel, you'll need to push down and then shimmy them off from the wheel. That way, they are way easier to clean. Then you can take them to the sink and just rinse them off before you put them back on the wheel. Take your entire tool bucket to the sink and wash your tools. Make sure that each and every one of those tools makes its way back into the bucket. Um, the person that uses your wheel after you in my next class will be very pleased to see that they have everything they need. You will most likely have some clay at the bottom of your bucket you were using to wheel throw. Please make sure you bring your bucket to the reclaim bin and put any extra chunks of clay in there. Then you can put your hand in front like a strainer and dump it down the sink. Rinse out your bucket and then put it back by your wheel.